You think leadership is a common case? No. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Whenever you are in leadership. Look at what happened to Donald Trump. In America, where security is everywhere. Yet, two times now, they wanted to kill him. Every profession has its own risk. If you're not willing to take the risk that is attached to any profession, step aside so that people who are given that mind by God will go ahead and serve God in that capacity. If you're an actor and an actress and you say you're not going to hug babes and you're not going to kiss them, step aside. <laughs> because that's, that's what the job is. Don't come and say you're a born again Christian. <laughs> That's what the job entails. For a politician, and you can't stand for your people that voted for you. And because you don't want to die, step aside. Because that's what the job entails. Any politician that is not behaving like Simfubara, who will resist and protest when his rights are trampled upon. Knowing that our judicial system, knowing that our electoral system have failed us. That any politician who will not stand his ground, no matter the risk to his person, I said, I will not speak for that politician again. And I maintain it. And you can see what is happening because we can't go forward. We calm down. If Simfubara has been saying, calm down, calm down, do you know where River State would have been? He said he's ready for them. He's fully prepared. The election must go on. The election must hold. Winners must be declared. They will be sworn in. And whatever is going to happen, let it happen. I am looking for leaders who would say nobody will rig my election. And if you rig my election, I will fight. Nigerians come out and fight. If they kill anybody, let them kill all of us. Oh, yes. And thank God I'm seeing it happen. What Fubara did, was he advocating for violence? Was he advocating that the law should be broken? No. He was advocating for his right. That's my opinion. That's my advocacy. We must advocate for our right and stand by it. I did not disqualify anybody. I don't have that right. I said, I am not going to speak for anybody going forward except this person meets this criteria. In any case, we have finished 2023 election. It's over. 2027 election has not come. So, anybody who is saying betrayer, betrayer, what am I betraying? There is nothing on ground. When I was a spokesman in 2023, I did my job creditably well and we convinced Nigerians on what we believe is right. But you can see that in Nigeria, you not only have to have the power to win election, you have to have the power to defend your election. So anybody that does not have that spirit of power to defend the votes in a manner that you would say, whatever happens to me as a person, let it happen. I am not willing to speak any further for the person. So what I just simply said is that going forward, I will no longer be part of this until these fears are addressed so i did not disqualify anybody one i don't have that power then two i am not betraying anybody because i'm still a member of labor party and you can see i'm still fighting the labor party should be consolidated because nigerians are looking for an alternative to these people that if you want to fight these people who are compulsive thieves and who are the worst amongst us leading us according to Sidetan Dume, who is part of them, then you have to grow higher and be more aggressive than calm down. That's what I said, and I stand by it. In all honesty, I would have said, we don't. But because I'm a student of theology, I would not say so. Because when Elijah thought he was the only person that was worshipping God, God said, no, you're not the only person. There are more than 7,000 persons like you still in that country that have not done anything evil. I know them. So, the only thing we have to do in this country, we must not be sentimentally attached to anybody, any politician. We must not be loyal to political parties or politicians. We have to be loyal to the country and to the law. And if any law 
is if any law is unjust we have to fight the law if anybody is doing anything illegal no matter who the person is we have to fight the person so in nigeria we must create the environment so that those seven thousand that we do not know who are leaders will be able to begin to emerge if the good ones keep quiet they will never emerge when people say people are selling their votes you know why they are selling their votes because they believe that even if they vote their conscience it will not count not because they want to be corrupt they saw what happened in 2023 I was an active participant in that election of 2023. They did not sell their votes. But after, it did not count. So they'll be like, why would I go and say I'm voting for my conscience? When it will not count. If I'm going to take this money, at least it will be what I gain. So if we don't fight, we are... I think Kenneth Okonkwo is beginning to sound like a broken record because I don't understand why he always takes every opportunity he has to throw shade to Mr. Peter Obey calling him weak, accusing Peter Robi of wasting Nigerian youth time, accusing him of not standing and fighting with the Nigerian people in order to reclaim his mandate. I don't really know if um, Kenneth Okonkwo is playing to a script. We all admire what Fubara did in River State. He stood against the federal government, he stood against the police, he went all out, defend his state, defended his action and conducted an election even though the police and the federal government did not want him to conduct that election and it was successful and he has gone ahead to swear in the people that were elected in that election. Bara showed braveness in the midst of challenges and kudos to him for that but comparing him to Mr. Peter Robi is really really out of it and I think Kenneth Okonkwo is really really getting out of line. Fubara is an executive governor. As an executive governor, he controls all the instrumentality of state at his deposer. Fubara has executive power he can do and undo in his state. Fubara is a chief executive officer in River State and as a chief executive officer, he has the sole responsibility to protect his people. The law has mandated him, has empowered him to do that. The local government election is within his jurisdiction. It is his power to conduct that election not the federal government. He has the power to tell the federal government, stay away from River State, I'm going to conduct this election and the federal government is not going to do anything about it. The law is backing him to do that. Comparing Fubara action and the election that happened in River State to that of what happened at the national level is really, really out of it. You can't compare what happened in one state to what happened in 36 states of the federation. You can't compare what happened in River State to what happened against the judiciary INEC and the federal government. Mr. Peter B. mandate was stolen, we all know that. But I think that this whole talk of Mr. Peter B. should have led a protest is a very dumb discussion. It wasn't only Mr. Peter B. vote that was stolen, the vote of millions of Nigerians were stolen. If they really wanted to get back their vote, they should have gone on the streets to protest. Nobody should have waited for Mr. Peter Robi to lead the protest. Kenneth the Congo is angry with Mr. Peter B. that Mr. Peter B. did not lead the protest. Did Kenneth Okonkwo lead a protest? Did anyone stop him from leading a protest? We all saw that there was a protest after the election. Dr. Mo and his colleagues protested for one full week in Abuja. They barricaded the INEC office. They barricaded the judicial complex. Where was Kenneth Okonkwo when all this protest was going on? He was nowhere to be found. He was waiting for Mr. Peter B to lead him to go and protest. I mean, you all want a scenario of what happened to Abiola to happen to Mr. Peter B. Abiola was killed. What was done to it? What did his supporters do after he was killed? They did nothing. Today, Abiola is no more. His name is being maligned. Abiola is currently being labelled a drug lord. Abiola is currently being labelled a criminal. Is this the same thing you want for Mr. Peter B? So he can go out there and be killed. You all know Peter B is an Igbo man. And there is always a trap that is being set to Igbo people. When he go out there to protest for Nigerians, he will be killed. The only thing that Nigerians can do at a short while is to go out and protest, but he has been killed and gone. God forbid, Peter Ruby is not going to die for anyone. If Nigerians are tired of what is happening in this country, they know what to do. They should go to the street and protest. They should go and recover whatever was stolen away from them. Kenan the Congo keep making the assertion that Peter Ruby is weak. Peter Ruby is not weak. Let us compare what Peter Robi did in Anambra State to what Simila Fubara is doing in River State. Before Fubara started fighting off in Yesowike, Mr. Peter Robi has done that way back in Anambra State. When Peter Robi became the governor in Anambra State, 
Anambra State was a one-way political state. Anambra State was a PDP state. Not just a PDP state. Anambra State was controlled by Godfathers. You have what we call the Chris Uba family. I mean, we are talking of a state that kidnapped a sitting governor for one week. Their governor was nowhere to be found. Chris Ngege was kidnapped by the Uba family because he refused to honor the agreement they had before they made him governor. Before you become a governor in Anambra State, you must be sponsored by political godfathers. Peter Robi conducted the 2003 Anambra State gubernatorial election with Chris Ngege and his vote was stolen by the Uba family. They single-handedly steal his vote and make Chris Ngige the governor. Peter Robi did not fight with anyone. He didn't take his supporters to go to the street to fight. Went to the court and recovered his mandate. When he had the executive power, he ensured he destroyed every structure of Godfatherism in Anambra State. He destroyed the political dynasty of the Ubad family in Anambra State. This is the reason why they hated him so much. All the big politicians in Anambra State that were controlling the resources of Anambra State, he made sure he took every structure away from them and gave it to the people. The reason why you're seeing someone like Otto Eze, Ebeko Ford, they are not happy with Mr. Peter Obi because of what he did to them in Anambra State. Did all this thing without fighting any one of them physically. He did all this without risking the life of his supporters and his own life in fighting off his political opponent. He did all this thing without any form of violence. Peter Obi has said that. He wants to usher in a new Nigeria. We are currently experiencing a Nigeria that is filled with criminality. A Nigeria that is filled with violence. You don't expect Mr. Peter B to go this same route of violence in order to achieve a new Nigeria. Peter B character has been consistent. From the day he was governor in Anambra State till now, he has remained consistent with his character and speech. Peter B is a person of non-violence. Peter B is not a criminal. Kenny Dokongo is aware of the personality of Mr. Pitobi. Why is he trying to force Mr. Pitobi to be who he is not? He knew who Mr. Pitobi is before he decided to support him and speak for him in the 2023 general election. Why is he trying to change the personality of Mr. Pitobi? I mean, these are the kind of characters we have in Nigeria. Many other presidential candidates that will do whatever thing you want them to do in order to get power. Peter B said that he is not interested in power. He is interested in making Nigeria work. You have Bola Tinibu. He is a grab, snatch it and run away kind of politician. Why not go and support Bola Tinibu? Support Atiku Abubakar. Support Kwan Kwaso. Go and support Showere. Showere is an activist that is ready to fight everybody that is standing on his way. Go and support him. Allow Mr. Peter B to be the kind of person that he is. Peter B is not going to change his personality because you want him to rule over Nigeria. He is not desperate to be president. He has said it countless times. He is desperate to see Nigeria work. Can't you understand this, Mr. Kenneth Okuonkwo? If you think it is easy to do what you are asking Mr. Peter B to do, you can lead the process. Go and contest for an elective seat. And if your vote or mandate is stolen, use bazooka and go on the street, kill everybody, fight everybody, destroy the country, and let us see the outcome of your action. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.